Hello and welcome to what will hopefully be the first video in a series of tutorials aimed at content creation primarily but not exclusively for Second Life using primarily but not exclusively Blender. If I haven't confused you already, then we're off to a good start. If you are one of the people that requested these videos, hello and welcome. If you are not one of the people that requested these videos but you're here anyway, hello and welcome to you too. I hope that I will be able to provide something that everyone can take something away from. Perhaps not with this video specifically, this is going to be a very introduction video. I'm going to cover setting up Blender to use primarily with Second Life, uh, or discussing the points that we need for Second Life. I'm going to be discussing uh, Windows, I'm going to be discussing camera control, and I'm going to be discussing your basic selection options. So when you open Second Life for the first time, it won't look like this. You will probably be in perspective view, which will give it a weird kind of look sort of like this there were probably with a cube I will just add a cube in there really quickly so you can see you'll probably look something like this um, where I would recommend initially pushing your 5 key on your numpad to get you to orthographic view pushing 1 on your numpad to get on your camera to the front selecting the cube with the right mouse button pressing delete and then pressing enter. I would then recommend moving over to your properties tab on the side here, selecting world, making sure all of these sky buttons are unchecked, checking ambient occlusion, if I have it on factor one and multiply, and checking your samples to at least five. Now you can see this top window won't look like yours. I have it set to UV image editor. And I have my bottom left window, which you will be, by default, timeline, set to my node editor. These two windows will not be used in this video. They will be used when we come to uh, UV mapping and texturing. So I will hopefully bring those into a proper account in the proper time. You can hold shift and press space on any, or with your mouse, over any of these windows, which will full screen and minimize them all. You can also go to these selection points where you can change the size of your windows. You can right click these selection points, have split and join area. I could split an area here, bring in a larger version of my UV image editor or even a movie clip editor. If I was to edit my movie directly in Blender, if I didn't want this, I could right click that join again, join area, bring the arrow onto the side that I want to remove, left click and away it is. There are extra tabs on pretty much all the windows. You will see them as these little plus points. You can click the plus points. You can drag them in and out. Or there are shortcuts. The only one I know off the top of my head is T for this left menu. I only know that because I use it often. There are extra windows on UV map here. Just click those for you so you can see them. The, uh, and that is the basic layout of your windows. The primary thing that you will require for working in Second Life is a Collider Exporter. If you come down to Export your file menu, there is a Collider Exporter here. It is not optimized for Second Life and it may cause errors, but it is free. If you are okay with spending a little bit, I would heavily recommend investing in a plugin called Avastar. I will link the website down below. I will bring up the website here so you can have a quick look. Um, as you can see, it will be able to import a Second Life avatar with its own custom animation rig in there. You can use it for rigging. You can use it for animating. You can use it just to make a Second Life avatar in, sec in Blender that you can work around. You can set that avatar to any say, uh, size, scale, shape you like, and it has its own optimized Collider exporter. You can pick up the plugin either in World at the Jazz Shop, I believe it's about 6,000 Linden, or it was when I purchased it, or you can buy it via PayPal for $27. If you have 6,000 Linden in Second Life, or you are a content creator that brings in money who exports from Second Life, it may be cheaper to buy it directly in the shop, I believe, 6,000 Linden is about $20. Um, I won't know off the top of my head. I don't know the prices for buying Linden off the top of my head. It may be cheaper either way. It's worth looking into. 
once you have purchased the item you can if you need to re-download or update you can visit them in their shop and click and there's an object in their shop you can click to get your download links back or if you have purchased via PayPal you can give them your PayPal information and they will take you to your download page well not your full information obviously just your email address that your PayPal is linked to once you have your download page you will download it as a zip file if you come back into Blender and file user preferences you can then select install from file here I have my version it's a slightly older version that I have uninstalled so I can show you the installation install from file there's a little checkbox that you need to do turn it on uh, you can keep this as PNG quite easily I prefer target files so I will switch it to TGA and save user settings uh, We'll close this window now and then if I use shift A for add you can see Avastar is now on the bottom if I was to make a mesh I will make a UV sphere for simplicity's sake and then push my T button to get out my window I now have custom mesh with options for exporting to Second Life I also have, when I create my sphere, my segments menu, my rings menu, and my size menu. If I wanted to only have my sphere 16 by 16, I could change this bit here. And here we have it. I will close this side window to get a better view here. Once again, I'm going to use one on the numpad to go to the front view. I can hit three on my numpad to go to the right side, seven to go to the top. If I hold control and press 1, I will go to the back. Control and 3 takes you to the left side. Control and 7 takes you underneath. Which you can't really see with the sphere, admittedly. But, um, yes. 5 will take you in and out of perspective and orthographic, as you can see. I would not recommend trying to model in perspective mode. It can throw off your view by quite a way. And it's not very accurate, in my opinion. You can use the scroll keys of 2, 4, 8, and 6 on your numpad to rotate up and down with 2 and 8, and 4 and 6 to rotate left and right. You can use your middle mouse button to rotate around the center pivot of your camera which at this point is on the world origin that you can see as a unmoving object in the middle of the sphere. You can hold to control and rotate your mouse wheel up and down to move left and right. Hold shift to go up and down with the mouse wheel, or just the mouse wheel on its own to go in and out. If I bring us down now and select the object with the right click, I can hit the period key on the numpad to focus my camera on the object I have selected. The other camera controls worth mentioning would be the Z key. The Z will toggle wireframe mode. You can do this from a selection here. We'll show you bounding box, wireframe, solid and texture. The shortcuts for wired and solid switch are the Z key. The shortcut for textured is Alt Z. As you can see, there is no texture or material on the sphere at the moment. It is coming out as a bright white solid. The selection tools, if we hit tab, we will go into edit. I have already mentioned that right clicking will select uh, the object you wish. We can press A to deselect all or A to select all. If you have part of the mesh selected and you press A, you will deselect as a standard. The, I will go into more advanced selections later, but I will cover the most basic points at this time. We can select with vertex, edge, and face. Vertexes are your corner pieces, like this one here, or this one here or this one here. Edges are the lines you see. 
oops, ignore me there, sorry. And faces are here. You can, if I go into edge mode, if I deselect all with A, select multiple by clicking your first, holding shift, clicking the next one, and select what you like. You may hold Alt and right click to select a loop. You may hold Shift and Alt and right click to select multiple loops. You may hold Control and Alt to select a ring, which is like a loop, I suppose, but you can experiment with it and see how the selections differ should be fairly obvious from this screen. If you control alt shift you can select multiple again. You can select a point, hold control and use the positive and negative keys in the numpad to grow and shrink your selection. You can lose your selection by control minusing past your point. The selection in this method, if you reach an edge, I will just select this loop here, press delete and then select vertices. If I was to select this ring, or loop, sorry, and hold control and press positive, I would grow and shrink around that loop. If I was to grow it till it hit the edge and then shrink it, it would move down to the edge. Something worth considering. Sometimes it's a help, sometimes it's a hindrance. The other methods of selecting would be with the brush tool, which you select with C. You can now see the circle around my mouse tool. I can use left click to select the items I wish. I can scroll my mouse wheel to make it bigger and smaller. I can use the middle mouse button to deselect any I wish. I can use the marquee or box tool with the B button. Click and drag. I will note, while I've done this, if I press my 3 on my numpad to go to the side view, you can see that nothing on the back side has been selected. If you wish to use a marquee tool or any kind of selection to go all the way through your model, you will first have to switch to wireframe mode, where you can then select your marquee tool, select the area. I will use Z to go back to regular, and I can rotate round, and you can see I have now selected the full area there. Also use the marquee tool by dragging with the middle mouse button to deselect. When you have an object selected, sometimes when you're moving or uh, rotating or something, it will just vanish. Poof. What has actually happened here is I've hit one of my keys, in this case the 2 key, and it's moved to a different layer. Well, this is a, a common mistake made with a lot of people I've had to explain that like they just panic and their model's gone and they start over from the beginning. All I do is um, push 1 and I move back to layer 1. There are 20 layers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Alt, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. You may have noticed these boxes here were shifting as I was going through channels. So if I hit 5, it's now moved to box 5. I can also click this box to the one with the dot that lets me know there is an object in there and it will show me the object. If you wish to you work on multiple layers and then later combine an object, you could press M with an object selected and then the number or the box that you wish the item to move to. If I then point down here, you can see the circle is now in box 2. I can then press my 2 key and see it on layer 2. 
for uh, my first video, this is 15 minute mark, so I will call it a day. I will go into selections and advanced selections or movement tools in the uh, next video. Uh, thank you for being patient with me and watching and hopefully this was the start of a learning experience for me and you.